Hey everyone and welcome back to another C Sharp RPG tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be making a spawn point for our enemy. So you can set up a bunch of different spawn points throughout your world where you want your enemies to spawn. And we can actually set it up so they spawn within a certain radius. So when it's time to respawn them we'll pick a random spot in that circle and we'll drop them down onto the ground and that'll be their spawn point. Now we can also set it up so they stay within that area and they don't wander off out of that, that range, or you could set the range to be further. But for right now, we're just going to create the, the spawn and respawn system. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to just create an empty game object. And we'll give it a little 3D icon so we can check it. So this doesn't have to be perfect. You can just put it up in the air. That's probably the best spot that we can put it. Uh, we'll just increase this a little bit so we can see it better. So what's going to happen is, yeah, we're just going to reference from this point, and we're not going to worry about the height because we're going to be calling a ray cast down towards the ground, depending on which spot we pick in this radius. So even if you did spawn on top of a hill or higher or lower ground, it won't really matter. It'll always place them on top of the terrain no matter where they spawn. So for now, we're just going to set it up here. And we'll just call this respawn point. Now we're going to be linking our actual enemy to this point. So we're going to be creating a new piece of code that handles the respawn system and where it's going to be placing the enemy. So what we want to do now, one last thing we have to do is create a prefab. And we'll just call this enemy one for now, just to make it simple. And we want to take our enemy and we want to put them onto the prefab. Now, if you don't know what prefabs are, they're pretty much just something that you can create multiple copies of the same object with. So if we get rid of this enemy, we'll just hide them real quick and we'll grab our prefab. You can see we can spawn a bunch of these. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be instantiating these enemies um, at multiple different points. So we can create a bunch of different spawn points once we get the code done and they'll spawn in different areas and later on we'll make them wander around. But for now we're just going to delete these copies real quick and we'll go jump into our code and program what we need. So the first thing we want to do is jump back into our enemy stat script and we're going to be adding a few things into here to reference to the respawn point. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the actual death of the enemy so if the player kills the enemy, it needs to sit and wait for a certain amount of time before we initiate the respawn code on the point. Because we don't want multiple enemies spawning at the same location, unless that's how you want to set it up. But for now, we're just going to be spawning one enemy at each location, depending on if they are dead or not. So the first thing we want to do is create a public pool, and we'll call this is dead. So we'll keep track if the player or the enemy is actually dead or not. The next thing we need is a public float, and we will call this uh, respawn time. So this will be referencing the respawn time for the actual enemy until it sends a signal to the respawn point that we want to respawn the enemy. And this can be changed um, for any different monster. So if we had multiple different monsters, maybe one was more rare than the other one. and Depending on that, you might want the respawn time to be shorter or longer if it's a rare enemy. And then the last thing we're going to do is create a public game object. And this is going to be referencing to the respawn point. Because after we set up our enemy, we want to call some uh, a function on the respawn point location that we want to respawn our enemy. So now what we want to do is add some code to here and we're just going to be adding not is dead. So if our cur HP is less than or equal to zero and we are not dead, then we're going to change is dead to true because we don't want to constantly recall that our, our enemy is dead and call the code for the death script multiple times. We just want to block it out so that's not going to happen and that our monster's HP still displays at zero. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is do a start quarantine. 
And we're going to just name the um, IE numerator that we want to call, which is just going to be death. Close that out. And now we want to create an IE numerator. Now in here we can actually specify time. So we can use uh, yield wait for seconds in this, which will wait for a certain amount of time. So what we're going to do is just call this death. Now that's all fixed. And now we actually want to set up a time that we want to wait. So we will be referencing the respawn time in here. You can also, if you wanted to, at the start when you spawn it, you can create a random respawn time within a certain um, amount. Or we can just do that on the respawn. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But yeah. So for this code, we actually want to add in our yield return. And we're going to be creating a new wait for seconds. And the amount of time we're going to wait is how much respawn time we want to set that at. And from here, we are also going to add in a send message to our actual object. So we'll be setting up a send message here in a bit after we get the other piece of code done. So we'll jump back here and set that up in a bit. And then we actually want to destroy this object. So we're just going to be saying destroy this dot game object. So we're going to wait for the amount of time, send a message that our enemy has died and we want to respawn them. And then we delete this and the respawn code will take care of that. So this is all we need for right now. We'll come back and do that in a bit, but we'll go back into Unity. And we're just going to create a new script. My computer doesn't want us to freeze. <laughs> and we'll just call this code respawn point as well. Now we're just going to open that up and go write the code for that. Now in our respawn point code, I went ahead and I pre-coded everything. I knew I'd end up running into a few issues, which I did. Um, one being that the physics raycast, um, for whatever reason, it didn't like hit transform on a terrain, so I had to use hit point. And I guess that just calculates the exact point that it hits. Um, for some reason with hit transform, it hit below the terrain at its lowest point, even though there wasn't any collision there. So um, that just must be a thing that Unity does, but yeah. So I'm just going to go through and tell you guys everything that I did in the code and explain everything. So the first thing I did was create two game object variables, one being enemy prefab. So this is where we're going to plug in our prefab for our enemy that we're going to use to spawn. And then our next thing is enemy target. So the prefab that we spawn, we need to set it to the enemy target. And then at the start, I just did spawn enemy. You could set up a timer as well to make that delayed. But for now, we're just going to spawn the enemy right away. And then the next thing we need to do is create a vector three. Now this is going to be handling the randomized points that we want our enemy to spawn. So we're going to be spawning it. So our reference is the actual empty game object that we set for the spawn point or respawn point. And so uh, the X position is going to be randomized and it's going to be, so we're gonna take that initial point and then we're gonna to add to it so we're going to pick a random number between negative 100 and 100. And the Y we're just going to leave alone for now. We need to adjust that in the future because our enemy needs to spawn in that area. And then we, from that position, we need to place them on the terrain ground. If we place them on the terrain ground first and then we move their spawn position from the center, it, it might put our enemy underneath the terrain. And then we just did the same for Z, just randomizing the two different positions. So we're going to be creating a game object clone. This way, when we our instantiate our prefab, we can actually um, set some settings for it. So we're going to be instantiating our enemy prefab here. So we're just going to plug in our prefab there. 
And random spawn is just this vector 3, so that's the position that we want to instantiate our clone. And this is just for the rotation, we're just going to leave it set at default. Now there's other ways you can do this where you can set the rotation to be um, at a certain point, but for now we're just going to use this. And so now we want to set our enemy target to a clone. So it's referencing, it's pointing at the clone that it's attached to this respawn point. And then our enemy target, so whatever we spawned, we want to um, grab the stats for the respawn location and set that to the object. So this is going to be referencing where we actually, what spawn point we spawned at. So we know when our enemy dies that we can respawn them at that same point. And now we're going to be calling a ray cast. So this is going to be an invisible line that fires out from our enemy. And we're going to do negative vector 3 up, which sends it down. And it's just going to keep going until it hits something. And we could set up a tag for this if we want to. But if you're setting up your spawn system, maybe on a building or something like that, um, you don't just want to reference the train. The enemy is going to get put underneath the actual level itself. So um, for this, we're going to be changing just the Y. So we're leaving, after we've randomized these positions, we want to keep them the same. So whatever our enemy target position is currently for the X and Z, we're going to leave it. And hit point Y, um, so whatever this ray cast hit, we're going to take that point and then we're going to plus it by 5. So we're going to set them above the train. Now if we add some gravity to our enemy, they'll fall right onto the train. Um, you can also set this up if you know the exact height of your enemy. Just cut that in half and they'll spawn right on top of the train. But for testing purposes, we're just going to set it to that for now. So if we jump back into Unity, um, we can go test this out real quick. So if we see, here's our spawn point, which is hovering. And we'll jump in here and we'll see where our enemy spawns at. So our enemy spawned over here. So if you see from the actual spawn point, they picked a location over here and it set it down onto the train. Now we're going to do something really quick with this enemy. We're just going to take this clone and we're just going to test this real quick. So if it goes to zero, you see that it instantly respawns in a new position. Now what we could do is we could go into our code into here in the spawn enemy and just make this an I enumerator. And we can set a wait time, so we can randomize the wait time, or we can set it to a specific amount that we want this enemy to respawn, and that's how you would set it up. But yeah, this is just a basic way you guys can set up your respawn system. So we'll go over some other enemy things. We'll make it so our enemy will actually follow our player, depending on how far we go. And if the enemy gets too far away from that spawn uh, location, the enemy will ignore our attacks and run back to the spawn area or we could pick a random location for them to run back to or they can run back to the center but yeah until next time i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you later